So, Pooja, thanks for coming. I mean, I'll say thank you at the end also. And welcome to the Boss Dialogues. Thank you and for having uh, me. We all know Pooja Bhatt. We've known her as an actress. We know her as a producer. We know her as a director. We know her in so many different... And today, we're going to speak to her at length about people in her life, the films that she's made, why she made the, took the choices that she did, and stuff like that. What I want to ask you is, do you think really that is what we should bother about when we talk about women and direction? Or should we worry about the gender inequality in the film industry? It doesn't really matter what your gender is, but there's no denying that for women in this country and women in general across the globe, we have to work that much harder with, in comparison to our male counterparts to be able to get our foot through the door. Yeah. And it's easy to kind of write off a woman and say, oh, you know, I mean, you never know, she might get married, she might have a child, she might be PMSing, yeah. so is she really reliable? We don't have all of that with a man. Yes. And I think that's a fallacy and it's tragic, but I think for me, what separates a female director from a male director is really the gaze. Yeah. And again, I think it comes to the female form. Mm -hmm. And I think that I learned that with my movie, Jism 2, which I kind of can successfully made into a hit, is that there's a huge difference between the male gaze yeah. and the female gaze when it comes to sexuality, yeah. when it comes to sensuality, and how you approach the female form and what you really use it for. So I think therein lies the difference and I think somewhere we as women also get very caught up with trying to be too serious. And I think we need to have some fun and beat the boys at their own game because I think that we have far more sensual creatures and they can never be in their lives. Exactly. And we need to celebrate our own sensuality and sensuality does not mean taking your clothes off Absolutely. or making a movie that involves any amount of erotica. I think that even when you shoot food today, mm. it has to be a sensual experience. Yeah. You know, how you drape your dupatta, for example. Exactly. It has to be done in a manner and I think that comes naturally to women yeah. because women are naturally sensual because of their touch, the, the, the way they walk, the way they are. Yeah. And we kind of have, have been just brainwashed to constantly push that in the back burner yeah. and bring our very asexual sides to the fore. So I think that's where the difference lies for me. And did you face this when you started your, when you made your first film, Pop? In 2003, was there a lot of this uh, women director, women director, Pooja is a woman well, and she's turning director. I think by then they'd given up on me. I think that when I decided at the age of 21 to turn producer, producer when yeah. I was pretty much at the peak of my game, yeah. is when they looked at me and they said, what is wrong with you? You have a successful acting career in front of you. These are the golden years of your life in terms of age. Yeah. And at 21, you want to kind of sit behind the camera and kind of put your hair into a bun and worry about how Kajol is looking yeah. or how somebody else might be looking. And I yeah. think that is what freaked them out completely. But then I won my first national award for Tamanna yeah. and my second for Zakham. Yeah. And uh, I think they shut up then. You know, they said, this one we can't control. But you didn't think you'd combine it all. I mean, of course, not production and direction and acting. What's your production and acting? I didn't think I was going to be an actor, Hindu. I wanted to be an astronaut. I wanted to be an architect. I mean, these, these are the loves of my life. I mean, you know, for me, that, that's what it is. And I was 17 years old and my father came up to me and said, hey, I've got a script called Daddy. You'll fit the bill. Hmm. So are you interested? And I said, no, 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 I can't because I've grown up watching people like Smita and Shabana and Kulbushan and seen them all come to my home. Yeah. I've seen them through their highs, their lows. And I realized that, hey, fame is not for sissies, you know. Yeah. You need to have kind of really, really a thick skin and a very exactly. strong spine to be able to endure the ups and downs. Yeah. And I said, just because I'm a director's daughter, it doesn't mean that I can act. Mm. So yeah. I didn't say no because I was arrogant. I just said, no, can I do it? And my father said, okay, I'm giving you 24 hours to decide. Uh, 24 hours later, I didn't get back to him. So he called me back and said, okay, you haven't called me back and I'm going to sign Twinkle Khanna. So I said, hang on, hang on, hang on. I can't be replaced so quickly. So I said to myself, I said, I'm 17. Life is knocking at my door. The least I can do is just open that door wide. Exactly. What will I do? Yeah. I'll fail. Yeah. You know, I'll make an ass of myself. Absolutely. But at least I've tried. And I think when I look back at my life, what do I regret? The things I've not done. Not the things I've done, done. really. <laughs> you know, I wish I'd done far more. That's nice to know. <laughs> and your films, you know, be it Park, be it Rogue, not Holiday, except Holiday, uh, they all have this, uh, you know, they explore the sensuality yeah. more than just like a plain love story. Mm. And in this country, sensuality is something that we don't talk about. We push it under the rug. We uh, refuse to talk about it. And then you see the sort of things that are happening to women outside. Yeah. Uh, which is this real strange dichotomy. It is. So what are your views on this? See, so, you know, when I did PAP and I look back and if you ask me what would I change about PAP, I would change the borrowed theme of witness, okay. which we had used in Sadak. Yeah. 
you know, but in the yeah. time of Sadak, the people didn't have access to the internet and movies. Yeah. So Sadak was the same kind of construct of witness, really, which we reused there. If I just told the story of a man like John who was a backpacker, yeah. who arrived in Spiti and met this girl who grew up with a father who, because he'd gone through trauma and pain in his own life, wanted to prevent his daughter from feeling that, yeah. and said, you are just going to go into this mud and never feel anything uh, womanly, yeah. I think it would have been a far more riveting story. And it wouldn't have been colored by the, oh, it's a copy kind of tag. Yeah, yeah. I think if I look back, I can arrogantly say Pap was a great looking film. Uh, we shot, shot in a brand new location. We didn't have the privilege of DI at that point. Okay. It gave the, the country Rahat Fateh Ali Khan. But I do believe that for me, why it's an important movie is because eventually it deals with something that we are, we are unafraid to talk about. Yeah. And that is the female is capable of feeling as much desire. Yeah. And I do not think that anybody has the right to throttle that desire within you. Yeah. And desire does not have to be for a man. It could be for anything that your heart, heart kind of yearns for. Okay. Even when we make a film called Jism, if you look back at it, what's bold about it? The fact that you had a heroine saying that ye jism pyar karna nahi janta. Janta hai to sirf bhook, jism ki bhook. Oh my God, a woman can't say that. You can have a man saying that, you can have a villain saying that, but how dare a woman say that? And she says right till the end that I don't love you and I didn't care. Yeah. That's what's bold about the movie. Dhoom released at the same time, there was more cleavage in Dhoom. Vipasha walked out of the ocean wearing a gown, for God's sake, not even a bikini. You know, so the point is that I think what's, what's bold is the theme. <laughs> bold is not about bikinis and, and cleavage. It's about how you lead your life and yeah. what you're eventually saying. <clears throat> and I think the problem again with part two, the worst criticism was, oh my God, there's not enough sex in it. And I said, do you realize that that statement reveals you more than it does me? So then, uh, well, why do you think it is that uh, erotic <coughs> sensuality plays a large part in your films nowadays? Because the times have changed. I, I began my career at the age of 21 with Tamanna. Mm -hmm. Tamanna dealt with female infanticide. Yeah. Then I made Dushman, which got Kajal and her award for screen. Yeah. It dealt with the issue of rape. Yeah. We had a Ashito Jurana who kind of exemplified the average Indian man today. Absolutely. Then I did Zakham. I mean, then I, got, I, I had the privilege of kind of working with the people I did and I, I, I won my second national award. And then I did a movie called Sur yeah. that dealt with a teacher and a student relationship. That movie tanked at the box office, not a scroll went to watch the movie. That's when we took stock of the situation and say, okay, Sur had super hit music, but it's a box office failure. Yeah. So we looked at what was happening in America in the 50s and we said, you know, that's when a Billy Wilder came in and made a double indemnity because things really, really changed. Yeah. And I was unsure, I must admit. I said, are you sure it's going to work with everyone dying and this woman being so forward or whatever? He said, that's exactly what will work. And what do you lose anyway? True. And we did it. And the rest is history. Yes, absolutely. You know? So I think then after that, what happened? Then I did uh, a few more films. They didn't work. Then I pulled the rabbit out of the hat again and I did just them too. Yes. And that worked. Today I'm in, a in the privileged position of being able to kind of green light any amount of movies I want to because I've, I've, I have a 6.7 crore film that did 43 crores of business. Yeah, you know? true. So technically I am far, I'm, I'm far ahead of the 100 crore 100 club. Crore, because if you make a movie in 80 crores and you do 100 crores business, then who are you kidding? Exactly. What are the type of stories that you absolutely want to make in the course of your career that you haven't been able to do yet? I genuinely feel that I have not found my idiom as a filmmaker. What I have perfected is the externals. I think that, you know, when we talk about me being an actor, director, and producer, what, peop what people don't know, which I think is my most powerful facet, is the fact that I'm a production designer par excellence. Exactly. If I may blow my own trumpet, because nowadays nobody, nobody knows this part of me. Because I, it started with Jism. Yeah. It went on in, in, and I've done, all my films have been production designed by me. Yeah. I had on the sets of Jism to one assistant who spoke the local language who was my setting boy and I was producer, director and production designer and I want to know how many people in the country who can do that. You know, and I think I did it okay. Yeah. So the thing is that that yeah. is what gives me joy because I feel that setting my films in a place is what my skill is, whether we had Pondicherry and Jisip. Yeah. And I think even Kajwarari, which didn't release, yeah. was shot yeah. in Jordan yeah. and shot magnificently. So that, yeah. that, that I've mastered that. Now I want to leave that behind and I want to find a story that is true to my heart. I don't want to take a script that my father gives me or another writer gives me. I want to, I need to be able to find a tale that moves me first. And I think that I'm, I'm at a phase of my life where I think I will stumble upon my idiom soon. Okay. Because I think when you start living your life in a fearless manner, yeah. then you find your idiom. Right. But I think somewhere that um, every film of mine, whoever might have directed or not directed it, I stand by. If it's a flop, it's my flop. If it is a hit, it is everybody's hit. 
and that's what separates the boys from the men. True, true. You know, or the girls from the women for mm. that for that yeah. matter. Yeah. <laughs> now you worked with Shah Rukh Khan in Chahat. Yeah. You worked with Amir Khan, of course, in the very very famous Dil Hai Ki Manta Nahi. Yeah. So how did you let Salman go? I didn't let Salman go. <laughs> Me and Salman were doing a movie called Ram. Which Sohail Khan was directing, yeah. and no, we were not in a relationship at that point. And then I think the financier kind of bailed out on them, and that dream project of Sohail's never really saw the light of day. So I have technically shot with Salman for one day, okay. but that movie never saw the light of day, and I guess it didn't happen after that. It didn't happen again. And uh, how would you compare uh, now? Of course, you know there's this uh, huge difference between the way Shah Rukh works and the way Amir works. One is this perfectionist and. Uh, constantly rehearses, one is a spontaneous person. But back in the day, when you worked with them, and they were both relatively new, how, what, how did they? What well, Shah Rukh is as much of a perfectionist as Amir is. Okay. I think I've done more rehearsals with Shah Rukh than I have with Amir. Is that so? Yeah, he's a perfectionist. But the thing is that Shah Rukh does not take himself as seriously as Amir. As Amir does. So yeah. he makes even perfection seem like play. Uh -huh. right, you know? right. I mean, he's not kind of focusing that, but he's just doing it like it's play. Yeah. And I think that's what separates Shah Rukh and Amir is one plays, and the other one studies, huh. so yeah. you approach yeah. it differently. But I, the truth is that they are both uh, as particular uh, about not only what they are doing, but every department. Some might look at it as interference. Some might look at it as people who are truly, truly interested. Right. And I think both are truly, truly interested. But I do believe somewhere that uh, Amir is a lot more cautious than Shah Rukh is. What Shah Rukh did not have was that caution. Yeah. And I think that's what makes him Shah Rukh Khan to a large extent. So you think that's good? I think it's good. I think it's necessary. I think it's important to live a passionate existence over a safe one. Yeah. And if you lead a passionate existence, you lead a dangerous existence. True. And I think yeah. Shah Rukh lives far, lives far more dangerously than Amir ever could. You know, Alia Bhatt, your sister, yeah. was recently in the news and uh, for those uh, little, but let's say, slip of the tongues, as it were, mm -hmm. when she made those, uh, you know, Pranam Mukherjee yeah. and what, all yeah. that sort of thing. Yeah. And uh, the whole nation sort of uh, took a case after that. So do you think that was a valid reaction? It's a free world. People are meant to have their reactions. But I do know that unless you're a joke on SMS, you haven't arrived. Ah. You know, you know, you can, you can, you know the success of some, a brand or a person when they become an SMS or a WhatsApp joke. And at the end of the day, pe people need to decide. Do they want to look like Alia and dance like her and act like her or do they want her to kind of have the answers to all the problems of India? <laughs> she's an entertainer for God's sake, she's 21 years old and I think her answer to all those people was brilliant with that little video that she did yeah, where she yeah. just kind of you know took the piss out of herself and how many people have you seen, doing, seen, exactly. seen do that? We all told her to take it with a truckload of salt and I think her, her response to that was, was brilliant. Great. Absolutely. But so do you think uh, the butts are like soft targets? No, the butts are worthy targets. So we are like, bring it on. Because I think it's important for the world to get a certain degree of repartee as well. Yeah. So it's, it's all good. It, everything is good in love and war. There was a time in my life when things would happen and I would say, why me? Mm -hmm. But now I'm saying, yes, me. Because I think that I've got tough kind of uh, hide. I've got really broad kind of strong shoulders. And I think I have the capacity to bounce back. To everyone's infuriation, I bounce right back. Yeah. So I think, bring it on. I mean, we've never kind of shied away from saying, this is it, this is what we are, and deal with it, you yeah. know. Or yeah. please, we can escort you out of the room. So I think that uh, we don't have this feeling of why. Yeah. And I mean, there are times when it gets a bit absurd. But like I said, the few pockets of people who do not wish to even hear the truth mm. will not hear it anyway. True. So you Absolutely. can't color a whole section yeah. of people because of three or four idiots out there. Yeah. And there are plenty of idiots out there. Of but I see that today also, I mean, look at the average journalist. Mm. Do they even know what Raj Kapoor movies are? And first of all, why is Coffee with Karan asking questions like that? What's it got to do with the price of coffee beans wherever he gets them from? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I can't get that part. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, tell me, what was it like uh, growing up with this maverick genius, Mahesh Bhatt? Exciting. Very, very exciting because there was never a dull moment. There was always a motley crew around. There were always uh, dazzling people who I saw. I mean, I, was, I remember when I was, what, five or six years old, standing on my balcony in Shivaji Park. Uh, we lived right by the ocean. And I had the obsession to always go out and touch the horizon. Okay. And my father was lying on the parapet downstairs with Goldie Anand and uh, Gulchan Arora. Okay. And they were sitting there and they were having this conversation. 
um, slightly inebriated of course, and he looked at me and he said, hey, what are you thinking? What are you looking at? And I said, I'm looking at the horizon. I want to take a boat out and I want to touch the horizon. And he said, it's not there. It doesn't exist. Now, that should have been shattering for a child of my age, but I accepted it like anybody would a Mickey Mouse cartoon. And they were not very well off, but I had the best birthday parties. Okay. I don't know how they scraped the money together. I don't know how I managed to get my pretty little frock, how I had got the cake from McDonald's, how I had the buntings and everything. I remember at one such party, Helen G came in and she was glorious in, the, in her gown and her hair. And she arrived in this kind of cloud of perfume that I can still actually smell sometimes when I go back to that time. And she gave me my first ever Grimm's fairy tale, you know, book to read. And my life changed with yeah, that book. Yeah. I'll never forget the first time I sat in a Mercedes Benz. Uh, I was going with my father and Vinod Khanna to Pune when they were going off to see Rajneesh. Yeah. And I drove in that, and I sat in that car and I inhaled the smell of that leather and I said, someday I'm going to buy myself the same car. Yeah, yeah. And when I was 40, I bought myself the same car. So these are my little, little dreams that I've kind of, that I've kind of, whatever, these are the people who've taught me that. I remember Sanjay Dutt and Tina walking in, this most glorious, gorgeous couple wearing these cowboy boots and hats and nobody dressed like that at that time of, exactly. in, you know, in, the, in, those, in those days and age. Smita, who was so alive, so open in her grief and in her high times. Arth was shot in my house. I moved into the Sea Rock for a week and I felt like, you know, uh, like this little kind of princess who went to school from there. So I've had the privilege of watching these people bleed, win, right. lose. Right. And it was a fascinating chi childhood because, I mean, it was so alive. And I think that uh, I wouldn't trade that for anything in the world. I mean, I would go with my dad everywhere. My, my grand uncle would hit his forehead and say, Lo, Indira Gandhi or Jawaharlal Nehru because here they've come. I would just go with them everywhere. Huh. I was fascinated with editing, with, with the music sittings, with everything that went into the back end of making movies. So I guess I should have known that that's where I'm going to finally end up. True, know. true. I should have known that. So, uh, and, but he wasn't always there in your life, right? He was always there in my life. He and didn't. I think that even when he, when, he, when he left home the first time, uh, was for Parveen Babi. Yeah. We all know the history of that relationship. Exactly. Then my mother and him tried to make it work again. They had my brother. And uh, things began to unravel. Yeah. So when my parents actually took stock of their relationship and decided to move on, somewhere for me it was a relief. Okay. Because then I got my mother back for what she was and I got my father back for what he was. Mm. And he might have moved Hindu, but it's a matter of geography. Yeah. yeah. He might have physically moved out of that flat and has another family today. Mm. But he's never left. He's there for us through thick and thin, because that's the kind of man he is. That's the nature of, of the relationship he has with my mother. Yeah. She was 13 when she met him. He was all of 15 or 16. You can't just end relationships like that because you sign off on a divorce. Absolutely. Or you just kind of go and, you know, a, court, court, a judge says, okay, now you are, you're not married anymore. Yeah. When you have a bond, you have that bond. Yeah. So I think that I have the privilege of an example in front of me of two people who might have actually been separated for the last 30 years, but we have each other's back. Yeah. So he's been there. I guess I must be fair to all my siblings. I had the best of my age, but okay. because I was at that phase where I was not only 17 and growing up, I was also working with him. Yeah. So I got to kind of experience and my father in many ways. And you know, I worked with him as a professional. I was, at the same time, I was his daughter. We were in Uti, we were here, we were there. We have so many shared memories that my siblings don't have access to. Yeah. So in that sense, I am closest to him because A, I was the firstborn. And uh, we have a kinship. We've never lied to each other. And that is the yardstick I used when I announced my own termination of my marriage. Yeah. Because I said to myself, I said, I am not going to give people the privilege of coming and sniffing at my feet yeah. or at my ass, pardon my French. Yes. <laughs> if there's a decision we have made, yeah. me and Munna have always walked to the tune of our own drums. He's also a very independent man. If not, I wouldn't have been with him for 11 years. Mm -hmm. And I said, I need to kind of follow the same principle by which my father lived his life with me, where if there was something going on in my parents' life, I knew. Yeah. They never talked down to me. They treated me as an adult. So I think that I've, I've had that example in front of me and I think that today also, I mean, the million dollar question that hangs in this room too also is that why? Mm -hmm. But I don't think why is anyone's concern. Absolutely. Because nobody asks you why did you get married? Why did you fall in love? Yeah. Um, if, we're not if we're not together technically, we have separated. We have not filed for divorce. I'm not sure we ever will. I'm not sure we might need to. Mm -hmm. And I think that we are more together in our separation than most people are in their marital 
bliss. Yeah. And that's because of the kind of man he is first mm -hmm. and then the kind of woman that I am. Yeah. So who do you think shaped you more, your dad or your mom? Both of them, both of them, because I think that they both have traits that uh, are very special. They both have traits that should not be emulated as well. <laughs> like all human beings have those. But I think that because my mm -hmm. mother is so private and so uh, shy, I think that people don't know much about her, but I think that her sense of dignity yeah. that if I display today comes from her because, I mean, that's the way she's been with my father for all of these years and him with her. And I think that uh, she's always taught me the importance of being independent because she never had the privilege of an education. She was most upset when I chose to become an actor. She was like, she you wanted, can, to, she wanted me to go and get my degree and do my master's and she just felt that, you know, I could kind of achieve all I wanted and more. But then she came around to me when she saw my first copy. She said, okay, you can act, it's okay. okay. <laughs> but uh, she just wanted for me what she could never have. Yeah. You know, she yeah. started working when she was, uh, what, 15. She only knew one bus route into town to, and then to work and back. And my father was supporting her then because he got caught jumping the wall. So Ashiki's story is exactly. true. Exactly. And my grandmother exactly. said, you're old enough to romance. You're old enough to look after yourself. Perfect. So I, that, that's, a, that's a tough love stance, but it works. Yeah. <laughs> and they did, yeah. And they had me at a time when they had nothing, you know. Mm. And uh, I'm grateful for that because I think that we don't, on our birthdays, we don't thank our parents for giving us life. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, they did. And t today we think so much, oh, should we have a child? Should we not have a child? Can we afford it? Can I take a break? Or oh, I lose my body? I lose my mind? <laughs> but they just did it, people then. Yeah. <laughs> and then life took care of itself, of you know. Of itself, absolutely. Uh, just getting back to films, and I think Zakam was also A, wasn't it? It was an adult film. It was an adult film. Yeah, it was also banned in Mauritius for being yeah. anti-Hindu yeah. and banned in Saudi Arabia for being anti-Muslim. Muslim, yeah. And I then it won that. the National Award for Best Film for National Integration. Yeah. <laughs> so these are the dichotomies of life. <laughs> Ironic. <laughs> Tell me, how do you deal uh, with success and failure, both in personal and in professional life? The same way. In fact, I, 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 I'm more comfortable with my failure. I feel it keeps me more human, it keeps me more rooted, it keeps my sense of compassion alive. And I think that success has a tendency to kind of, you know, you get into this bubble where you just become mindless because with success comes a whole lot of mindless cronies that tend to surround you. Absolutely. And with failure comes then your dog and your cat and the five people who really don't care exactly. anyway, whether you're a hotshot movie star or whether you're making, or, or you win the Oscar yeah. or you don't, they just care about your heart that's beating inside your kind of chest. True. And I think that when I look at my father's life, I look at my grandfather's life before that, it's been a series of ups and downs. And I think that it's the tough times that actually teach you what you're all about. Yeah. I think that uh, the reason I've been allowed to kind of even make uh, uh, my four flops in a row is because even my flops don't lose money. Huh. That's because you are really you know? careful. I mean, I, see, I've learned from the best. I've yeah. learned from Mukesh Bhatt how to handle finance and I've learned from Mahesh Bhatt how to handle people. Yeah. And I think that it's a fallacy that only money makes movies. Yeah. People make movies. I, my, 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 my unit, my team will come into the unknown with no questions asked as because my commitment to them, my personal commitment to them. Yeah. And I'm a people person. Yeah. I'm there, I walk my talk. And uh, we go out unafraid and uh, we roll our short sleeves up and we work in a, in, a, in, a, in a way without any hierarchy. I don't make 40 crore small budget movies. Exactly. I make movies in 6.5 to 7.5 crores because mm. why? My dad makes them in 10 to 12. Mm. And I have only one competition, that's Mahesh Bhatt and Mukesh Bhatt. I have to beat them at their own game constantly, over and over again to be able to have people. Now they know, with you there's no issue on budget. Uh -huh. With there's, you there's no issue about money. For me, someone telling me that my film's gone over budget is like standing in the middle of the street and abusing my father. It's not going to happen. Yeah. I know my budget's like the back of my hand. I've learned that part. Now, uh, your films ha have always been, have always had this remarkable music. And, uh, you know, besides the accusation of the fact that they are taken from Pakistani films, um, they are in some way influenced by uh, Pakistani music. Well, but how much of uh, you is actually there in the music? Well, that has been said of uh, uh, my uncle and my father's movies, uh, not of mine. Okay. I have a fledgling company called Fisher Network, and I think that uh, what I'm very proud of is that Pap became the first film in the history of Indian cinema to be premiered in Pakistan yes. to begin with at a time when there were no direct flights as well. Yeah. And uh, we had Garaj Bharat, that was Ali Azmat's song, and uh, Rahat's Monkey Lagan, yeah. that was never part of anything. Mm. So, I mean, when I use music, I go to the source. Okay. You know, I mean, Orko got a break with, with, with uh, Jisim too. So, I cannot be accused of any degree of 
plagiarism with my music, as far as my music is concerned. Okay. And I'm, I'm, I say that with great kind of ferocity. <laughs> okay. And uh, I think that the music of Pakistan is brilliant. I think that the musicians there are brilliant. And I actually asked Ali Azma this question one day. I said, why are you guys better than us? Huh. And he said, Pooja, you can make a girl dance in a skimpy outfit and fool the people that your tune is halfway decent. We can't do that. We've got restrictions in this part of the world. Okay. So our tune better work. Despite the, you know, the, 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 the fireworks and despite the, the kind of spectacle, yeah. our tune needs to work. Yeah. And that for me was a great lesson. Yeah. You know, because I feel that what was the magic of Mahesh Bhatt's films mm. or Shekhar Kapoor's movies, mm. no tricks. Yeah, absolutely. Just moving stories told in the Sp most plain, simple that. kind of yeah. settings. Yeah. No tricks, no 500 dancers, yeah. 40 crore yeah. kind of set, all yeah. that kind of, you know, you make that noise when you have nothing to say. And you know, you mentioned Pap uh, being the first Hindi film to premiere in uh, Pakistan. Um, why is Pakistan so important? Pakistan is important and especially more so for artists because I think at the end of the day you cannot allow politics to color your art. I think that we belong to this fraternity that is global and if you're going to let politics of the country prevent us from working with people, that's the end of our art. Sure. Today they'll say don't work with, us, with someone from Pakistan. Yeah. Tomorrow they'll say you're North Indian, don't work with someone from South India. Yeah. Where does it end? Yeah. Yeah. We owe each other an allegiance because we are all in the same little boat in the same stormy sea Absolutely. and all we can do is clasp each other's hands and I think that at a time especially when the nations are at war mm. is mm. when we as artists have to reach out even further because music, cinema, storytelling, it has no boundaries yeah, and we can't allow it to have boundaries because yeah. for every indecent or appallingly behaved Pakistani there is an appallingly behaved indecent Indian. Absolutely. And when I went to Pakistan, I looked at the people there, all I saw were my own people. Yeah. I mean, the yeah. course of history has made it two separate countries. Absolutely. If not, we are one, yeah. you know, and it's yeah, not only yeah. Pakistan. I would say the magic of South Asia is that it's plural. Mm. It is a mosaic. Mm. We are individual, mm. but we have got a dearth of talent. Yeah. And I think that we have kind of, we've got so much to offer the world out there. And we just get caught up in this kind of, you know, one upmanship yeah, and pushing yeah. the other one down. And the West just has a laugh and kind of goes up there and achieves what they do with their mediocrity. Exactly. Just exactly. because they have the tools to tell those stories. Yeah. So if we actually clasp hands, mm. I think that we can really be a very, very formidable opponent to the rest of the world. Right, I yeah. mean, our heritage is rich. Our capacity to be able to endure is humongous. Yeah. We can do so much with so little. Yeah. We're a Jugaad nation, na? Yeah. So we do so the thing is that we, we, I think that we just need to kind of be larger and we need to kind of at times when there is a storm that hits us, especially political storms, mm -hmm. is when we need to dig our heels in and we need to say we shall not yield yeah. and we shall not flinch. Yeah. You guys go to war. We will continue to make music. Continue. Sure, sure. If you could, which Mahesh Bhatt film would you like to make again? Not as an actress, but make actually. You, do you feel any of his films have a certain imperfection that could be corrected? Um, I think what was great about them were those imperfections. Okay. You know, I think that my, my favorite movies of his are Janam, Saranj, Zakham, of course, which I had the privilege of producing and acting in. Um, and I think that Daddy was a very important film as well because I think it was a very personal film for him. Yeah, yeah. Especially the climax of that movie that came, was rewritten one day when I was staying in his house and Sony was in Hong Kong and Anupam and everybody was there and everyone was having a drink and uh, they all left and my father was left alone in that room with that bottle of whiskey. Okay. And the thought crossed his mind. He said, what if I just pick up the bottle and have a drink? Who'll know? Uh. My daughter is sleeping inside. My friends have left. Who'll know? And then he said, no, Mahesh, but you'll know. And if you'll know, it doesn't matter who'll know and who'll judge. Yeah. And then he came to the set the next day and he rewrote the whole climax. And that's exactly what happens in the movie. Yeah. So I think that, you know, we all lead flawed lives. And I think that if we're able to kind of pour those flaws in, to our films, mm. then I think you have something sparkling and marvelous. And I think that if there's something lacking about me as a filmmaker, I've, I've, I've perfected it. I mean, everything is pretty, everything is beautiful, everything is, looks wonderful. I think I need to pour more of my flaws in, more of my unsureties in, okay. more of my uncertainties in. And I think then will come something magical from that. So, redo, I don't know, but I do believe that a co his big first commercial hit, Naam, mm. I think could be remade wonderfully today. You know, I think that again was a, an underrated Mahesh Bhatt film. I think the combination of Salim Saab and Mahesh Bhatt was quite sparkling. Yeah, it was. And it I think was. that it was a kind of, I mean, I remember watching it in uh, Getty and the 
my god i mean that kind of reaction you don't see anymore yes, yes. so i missed the days of the stalls and when people came and whistled in the front row and, put money on the and you know now everyone comes and covers up in their on those fancy kind of airline seats and doesn't even want to kind of applaud or say terrible movie i'm yeah. saying say terrible movie say bakwas but at least react for react. god's sake true, true. you know are we, are we showing our movies to corpses so i mean i miss my first day first show chonni <laughs> class i truly truly miss them and i think salman khan has the privilege of that section and i hope he never loses that you know because that's what it's all about here yeah. uh, going out there and crying with the movies and feeling with it and believing with it and this actually you know your life just gets better for those two hours and absolutely okay one last question who do you think is the most talented bhat and when i say bhat let's let's uh, include the whole extended family the sunil and dharmesh darshan the imran hashmi mohit suri and the various various other people in your family well i would say the most courageous bhat the most passionate bhat the most alive bhat is certainly mr mahesh bhat and i think that there is no doubt about that because i think that he is a man who has walked his talk he's had the courage to stand alone i mean if i look at his book taste of life mm. you can put all his movies in a pile on one corner and you put a taste of life in one corner and according to me that's his most relevant work yeah uh that's the most personal story of his life the most personal relationship so i think you can line everybody else on the other side and you mr bhat is on this side and i can say is that if there's anybody who comes close to living life on their terms like he has it is me mm. me and only me mm. because what i've been taught by my father a letter he wrote me the day i was born when he was drunk sitting on the parapet in shivaji park when he had no money in his pocket he wrote me a letter on top of which he wrote be truthful and be fearless for you are part of divinity and not a sin yeah and that has shaped my life and i live that line as best i can it's not easy to be honest it's not easy to live with truths you pay the price for it absolutely you feel lonely you question yourself yeah. you falter you fumble but through it all i go back to that note and i go back to the way he's always been with me and he said don't wait for them to come sniffing for your skeletons take them to the graveyard <laughs> that lies in the back yeah and yeah. that's it i think that you unarm people with candidness and just yeah. being yourself absolutely. you know Do you regret that he's not making films any longer? Do you wish he'd come back? And I had the best of him, so yeah. I have no problems. <laughs> okay. I have no problems at all. I mean, I work with him in in his. I have had the best of Mahesh, but Sadak Dilak ke mata ni sir, even a Satwa Asman, phir teri kani yaad aayi. Yeah. Zakham, mm-hmm. Daddy. I mean, I lived. I think twenty five years in those twenty five movies that I have made with him. Yeah. So when no 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 wonder when he kind of put put, put his boots up, you know. um i wasn't really that keen to continue as well because i felt that i achieved in fact i met kunal kemu the other day yeah. who according to me is my favorite co star in the world and my best so far he told but sir he said but sir you destroyed me you gave me zakham exactly now what do you want me to do you want me to go out there and be that kunal kemu how can i be that when i don't get that back yeah, yeah. so i think he has a tendency to destroy people because once you've kind of you know launched in his gaze and you felt this warmth of his sun it's a cold 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 world out there i completely so he's a problem He's a big problem, actually. So he's the most problematic bhat. He's also. the most problematic bhat, the most passionate bhat, but by far the most talented because he says, "I don't know anything." That's that's just the way he is. I mean, I don't know whether it's 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 relevant, but he wrote me this letter that when Pap released, uh-huh. and I think I'd like to share it with if there's any people who want to make films out there, they must hear this. He basically said that on the 30th of Jan, when Pap lights up the next the silver screens, you will have taken your first step towards becoming a filmmaker. For me your father and a has been film director this will be a day when i will oscillate between the dread of you failing and the hope of you succeeding but for the entertainment industry and the rest of the world this day will be just another day and your film will be just another film so he says get this and get this straight a filmmaker's life is not as often thought a round of glamorous parties award acceptance speeches and glorious screenings in cinema halls filled with cheering fans it is in fact a grim treadmill of indifference humiliation and neglect When I look back at my life as a director with its intoxicating successes and belittling failures this is the lesson that I have learned it was my failures and my frustrations that spurred me to become a somebody okay. so he says puja my love frustration produces results the whole world of art is built on frustration but unfortunately i have become an obstacle and barrier for you today you have to break out of my influence you have to reject me who is your role model in order to come into your own 
He says, competition and rivalry are a fact of life. This is planet Bollywood. Gratitude does not exist and neither do friends. Yeah. It is a journey of the alone to the alone. You will discover for yourself on the, on the day of your release that more people here want you to fail than to succeed. Are you shocked? Don't say you didn't know this. Just like the world controls you by giving you money or denying you money, and this is about the critics, Hindus, so don't take it to heart. <laughs> and yes, let me give you important insight on how to deal with critics. The critic is like a mosquito who sucks your blood, not because he hates you, but because your blood is his food. He stings you to survive. A flea may irritate a horse for a few moments, but a horse is still a horse and a flea remains a flea. Just like the world controls you by giving you money or denying you money, the critics control you by giving you praise and denying you praise. But ultimately, it's the man on the street that decides the fate of your film. Because he pays to see your film, he has more honesty and integrity in his judgment. As long as you want something from someone, there'll always be someone out there to control you. I may sound very cynical, but a cynic is really a realist. One word of caution, forget making films for posterity. The world that you are at the threshold of was once ruled by giants who disappeared without a ripple. Just sing your song and go. But do you know what doing that means? It means to sing your song. You have to have the strength and the courage to be yourself. That means you have to be alone in this world. One without a second. And let me tell you, you have that courage. Oh, very nice. I think that's what Mahesh Pat gives everybody who, you know, comes anywhere in his... He does, Already. but that's what I'm so saying is that, you that know, people, you. like, when people mock a Malika Sharawat hmm. and they say, oh, she just repeats what Mahesh Bhatt says. Yeah. How come Imran Hashmi cannot repeat what, Malik, what Mahesh Bhatt says with the same amount of feeling? Yeah. So I think that you have to give the student its due as well. Yeah. You yeah. know, I mean, you can have 500 people sitting around Mahesh Bhatt. There might be two people who will take the right core of him home. Absolutely. So I think that, like my father always told me, he says, see, Pooja, I'll say start sound. Then you're on your own. Hmm. I can push you, I can train you, I can say do it this way, I can show it, show it to you, but once I say starts down, you are on your own until I say cut. So eventually there has to be something within you to, for someone to be able to pull that out of you, you know. Absolutely. I mean, there are no, nobody can put something there that's not there. That's not there. And yeah. that's what I've learned from him as well. He said, who am I to kind of give you freedom? You're born free. And I can't kind of give you values that have not worked in my own life. Just one last question. You have uh, Sri Sant now in your next film, right? Yeah. Sri Sant is my new Sunny Leon. He made as much news. So I think, I think that was the best thing that happened to me. Again, I casting on a complete whim. And I met him on, his, on, his, on the eve of his birthday. And uh, I was watching his, 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 his uh, wedding video. And I saw him in his classic uh, you know, attire where he went to the, uh, to the mandir. And I said to myself, I said, oh my God, the character that we have in Cabaret, who is meant to be a much older man, why can't he be... Shishant, playing a Malayali character who's based in Dubai, but it's so authentic because it's full of Malus, Dubai. Exactly. And, yeah. uh, you know, and uh, the, because he kept saying the word chata, 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 because uh, people kept calling him that, and I'm thinking, that's the character. So I shamelessly stole from his life, shamelessly stole, I said, you would wear the same outfit also that you wore in the movie, <laughs> and I just placed him in the movie. And uh, the rest just is history, really. Yeah, it made a big impression on It made an impression, but I guess yeah. people are like, huh? So I'm like saying, Shizan is my, is my Next new and better yeah? Sunny Leone. He's more skilled for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if the men would agree with that. <laughs> Depends on what kind of skills you're talking about. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so, Pooja, thanks a lot. As, uh, uh, as we all know, it was like really illuminating, candid, frank. You were vivacious. You were everything that we expected <laughs> you to be. I don't make 40 crore small budget movies. Exactly. I make movies in 6.5 to 7.5 crores because why? My dad makes them in 10 to 12. And I have only one competition, that's Mahesh Bhatt and Mukesh Bhatt.